you want to know what atheism has to offer society, just think about the matrix. People living in pods with their bodies sustained on pink goop while their minds are plugged into a virtual reality. That is literally the kind of future world leaders are now considering for the human population. Leaders at Davos, the World Economic Forum, the World Governance Summit, and elsewhere are openly talking about their plans for the future, and it's quite dark. Have you heard of the expression, get in the pod and eat the bugs? That is basically the kind of future that they have been working towards step by step, where individuals live in small personal living units or pods and entertain themselves with a steady dose of Marvel movies, video games, and pornography, not to mention antidepressants. This might sound far-fetched, but a huge percentage of the world population today already lives like that. In the largest urban centers around the world, people are living by themselves in their apartments, no significant other, no children, no family. Their only social connections are the ones they have online. They work from home alone, eat at home alone, and pleasure themselves at home alone. This is atheism's vision for society. Most atheists won't admit this, but this is nothing more than self-delusion. An atheistic worldview has dominated the, dominated the modern world, and these are the results. It's clear as day that this is what an atheistic worldview produces. I'll tell you why. First of all, atheism says that the only objective truth is scientific truth. This automatically means that religion and traditional, biologically rooted morality are out the window. What do I mean by traditional, biologically rooted morality? Traditional, biological rooted morality says that there are certain objective and immutable values that are embedded in human nature. There is the sanctity of marriage and family, the value of community, devotion to God, and the sanctity of the human body. Atheism says that's all garbage. There's nothing sacred about marriage. If you want to fornicate every day of your life, go for it. If you want to be romantically involved with five people at a time, ten people at a time, maybe throw some animals and some inanimate objects into the mix, no problem. Love is love. As long as you have 100% freedom to pleasure yourself, that's all that matters. And every taboo is just some nonsense religious zealots made up to keep you from having fun. Atheists also believe that family is nonsense. Sure, family is okay as long as they're supportive, but if your mom is being a pain, forget her. Your dad being a jerk, throw them in the nursing home. Your grandparents, uncles, and aunts don't support your personal freedom. That just means they're toxic and you have to cut them out of your life. As for children, who has time to raise a bunch of leeches that suck so much of your time and your energy and do nothing other than get in the way of you pursuing your dreams? Atheism says the same thing about community. Community is great, but only as long as you're getting what you want out of it. As soon as a community places some kind of responsibility on your shoulders that conflicts with your desires, then it's time to throw them in the trash and find another group who will accept you for who you are. Now, when it comes to religion, God, of course, is nothing but a fiction, according to atheists, but even if God were real and 100% proved by science, atheism, atheists would still think that's a drag to have to worship God and have religious duties. Why can't God just let us enjoy life and have fun? Finally, atheism attacks the sanctity of the human body. If you want to cover yourself in tattoos, why not? If it makes you happy to get piercings all over, why not? If you want to get surgery to change your gender, why not? If you want to cut off your limbs, get fin implants and live like a dolphin, why not? There are literally no limits. You'll notice that when it comes to all these things, atheism says the most important thing is fulfilling your individual desires. That is the key to happiness. And as soon as anything conflicts with your desires, that thing needs to be cut out. So this is how atheism destroys traditional, biologically rooted morality. Traditional morality says, no, sometimes marriage comes first, sometimes family comes first, community and God come first. Sometimes you can't have what you want. Sometimes you can't be free to live your life however you want to live it. Traditional morality restricts individual choice and imposes moral duties on people whether they like it or not. This is actually one of the main problems atheists have with religion and traditional cultures in general. The thing is, telling people that all that matters is satisfying your personal pleasures, getting that hit of dopamine and enjoying life to the max, that makes people more willing to, live, to prefer living life in a pod. Through technological advancement, the pod can fulfill your every desire. Want to travel the world and meet women? Virtual reality can make your wildest fantasies come true. Want to taste the finest culinary delicacies? Synthetic food technologies can deliver treats to titillate your every taste bud. Want to get the perfect high and experience euphoria? Deep brain stimulation technology can induce as much bliss as you want. And the best part about all this, you get it all right in your pod. Atheism has conditioned people to crave this kind of future. This is because atheism destroys traditional morality and programs people to put their personal desires above all else. The political and social culture then accommodates this psychology. In the past, people could be motivated by appealing to traditional values, appealing to God and the afterlife. But all that is off the table due to atheism. As society becomes more atheistic, telling people, do this because it is your duty to God, to your family, to your country. That doesn't motivate people anymore. You can only motivate them by telling them, do this because you'll be able to go on that vacation, you'll get to enjoy this new experience, you'll get to have fun with the latest gadget. People are only motivated by the pursuit of personal pleasure. Politicians and governments recognize this, so their political agenda increasingly revolves around promising more and more pleasure, fulfillment, more and more freedom, fewer and fewer duties. Of course, this freedom is not political freedom in the sense that people can choose the kind of society they want to want or the kind of future they want on a societal level. It's only the freedom to enjoy more and more personal pleasures. The way these secular governments give people what they want is through liquidating traditional values and producing new technologies. Governments say you can have sex with whoever or whatever you want. You have the freedom to change your gender. You have the freedom to blaspheme against God. You have no obligations towards your parents or your spouse. You don't want kids. No problem. There's full reproductive choice. If you do have a kid, don't worry. Here are all kinds of daycare and schooling programs so that a little brat won't hinder your pursuit of happiness. These policies aim to maximize individual happiness by absolving us of our duties to others. The result is extreme individualism. When you prioritize your personal desires over your relationships, those relationships die out. This is exactly why the institution of marriage is on the brink of complete 
complete collapse. Even non-marital romantic relationships are going the way of the dinosaur as all developed countries face an incel crisis. Birth rates and family size are plummeting. Community and religion have collapsed. Atheism has created masses of individuals who are desperately alone but don't feel like it because technologies keep the dopamine flowing. Whether it's antidepressants, drugs, social media, video game, pornography, everything at the tip of your fingers. Just constant stimulation. For all intents and purposes, people are plugged into pleasure machines which sap any last motivation they might have had to pursue meaning and reality. The kind of meaning and reality that atheism is constantly telling you is a figment of your imagination and nothing more than a byproduct of mindless evolutionary forces. So yes, let's place the blame for this imminent dystopia at the feet of atheism because frankly that's where it belongs. Get in the pod and eat the bugs. That in summary is atheism's contribution to society. And guess what? None of us have a choice in any of this. Atheism is authoritarian. If you don't like what's happening, that just means you're an extremist. Technological progress is inevitable and you'll have no choice in adopting it. When the seatbelt was invented, did they ask you whether or not you wanted to be forced to wear it by law? Of course not. Your choice is irrelevant. It's for your own good. It's for the greater good. That's what makes your choice irrelevant.